Hey friends, so I made a sweet little free device for creating deep signy sub bass tones that will still translate well from speaker to speaker to phones to PA systems. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it. Chances are you'll never need another plugin for making deep yet translatable and audible subby bass. Let's get it. So considering how prevalent bass music is in the electronic world, sub-bass is a vastly misunderstood and misused term. In fact, most all producers really aren't using the term correctly, and this is leading to all the confusion that causes many mixes not to translate well, from phones to PA systems to car systems to your speakers. I saw this hilarious meme the other day that made me laugh. <laughs> So the number one reason that your mixes don't translate to your phone very well is because, let's face it, phones don't make significant output at very low frequencies. Now you might say, okay, but how is it that I can listen to some of my favorite artists and the sub or triangle wave sounding sub bass is still full and deep? What is this magic? Well, it's not magic, it's physics. The truth is, is that we don't really hear sub bass so much as we feel it. In my mixing courses, I show that it's much more useful to think of sub bass as a completely different thing than bass. Now, sub bass comprises of frequencies between 20 and 60 hertz. Bass frequencies, however, are frequencies between 60 and 200 hertz, and these are the frequencies that most consumer electronics can reproduce. So in order to actually hear sign sub bass instruments and have them translate well from speakers to phones, your low end instruments must be making frequencies between 60 and 200 hertz. So when you hear a pro mix on a phone that sounds functionally similar to the mix that you heard on your speakers, likely it's due to, you guessed it, harmonics. Now of course it's easy to make harmonics, you just add distortions to a sine waveform. But it's not so easy to make the result pleasing and transparent, where your brain doesn't even know that the sine or triangle wave had distortion on it. That's where my little device comes into play. Let's dig in. Okay, so I promise that you won't laugh at my hastily made dub jam, but take a listen to this, and I'm just using a sine waveform for the bass. Now, likely if you were listening on your headphones, you could probably hear the bass. But if you were watching this on your phone or your laptop speakers, likely you couldn't even tell what the notes were that the bass was making. And even if you were listening on a big speaker system or on your headphones, it's really hard to make out the notes of this bass. So all that we're doing here is we're listening to this operator. Let's take a look at the spectrum. And as we can see, we can see that What's happening here is that all we're making is fundamental frequency. What is a fundamental frequency? It's just the lowest frequency and the note that the instrument is based around, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. And what's happening is that you can see, yep, we are well within, easily within what I would consider to be the sub bass range, which is 60 and below, okay? So what's happening is that especially the lowest note is really probably disappearing for most consumer electronics, right? Now, let's take a look at my device. So in my device, we're going to go ahead and just listen to that instead and look at the spectrum. Now, right now with the device turned all the way down, all these knobs turned all the way down, we've essentially bypassed the device and it is just making that same sine waveform, okay? But what's cool about this device is that we can add harmonics to this sub bass in a variety of different ways and a combination of different ways to tailor fit it to whatever song you're working on. So let's start with this first control and just turning this up alone, you're gonna probably start being able to make out the actual bass line here. Now all this first control is doing is adding a little bit of volume compensated hard clipping, okay? And what that's causing is some harmonics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the waveform. So here's this F sharp here and we can see that it is well within the 20 to 60 range. Now, what I could do is I could adjust this spectrum analyzer so that we could just see what is audible, right? Now, now once you've turned bass down below 40 hertz, it's, 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 it's functionally silent, right? But as I start to turn this up, check it out. We can see that all the way up, we have added harmonics and they've started to be audible. Now we're well into the bass range with this harmonic coming in at 139 hertz, right? We're adding that back to the original, right? 
Now these harmonics may look pretty strange to you. That's because they're odd harmonics, okay? Now check this out. The control that I've actually called harmonics is adding the harmonic overtone series. Check this out. We can see that we have another F sharp, a fifth, and then another F sharp up here, okay? So this is adding the harmonic overtone series, okay? So this control you could think of as the harmonic overtone series, which is why I call it harmonics, and this saturation is adding the odd harmonics, okay? When you combine these together, you can get some really great sounding low end. Now, a lot of folks will get here and they're like, okay, I can hear the bass, but I don't like the tone. The tone of it is annoying to me. It doesn't sound good. So the next thing to do is to work on the tone. And right here we have this scoop. Most of the time, the mid-range that is made, the low mid-range that is made from doing this kind of thing where you're adding these harmonics needs to be scooped out. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and play just in F sharp. Now with the scoop control, check this out. We can emphasize the lower frequencies by turning the scoop control up, functionally making the bass sound less honky. And the other thing we can do is further that idea by using a low pass filter. Now I think that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and listen to it in the song. Right, now, we can hear that bass and we like the tone of it, okay? Let's explore some of the other controls. And real quick, just so you know, I have super in-depth online courses for Ableton Live featuring over 80 hours and growing of focused Ableton training just like this. As far as I know, these are the largest and most thorough courses on Ableton music production available. So if you like this video and you like my teaching style and want to connect with hundreds of other like-minded musicians in our private Discord, you can learn more about it up here. Sweet, let's get back to it. So let's say you really like that wumpy low sound, right? Another thing we can do is add a specific octave to this. Now this is well up into the low mid range. Take a listen to this. I'm gonna play this F sharp. And so you can see that we're adding an octave here that is a full two octaves up. And then I also have another one way up higher. So let's say you want to keep that subby kind of sound. You can instead add octaves, a kind of triangle-y, sine-y kind of waveform at two octaves up and then another one at four octaves up and then you get this kind of sound. And then you can tailor how loud those are by using this low pass filter. And of course, a little bit of saturation or harmonics will go a long way. Awesome. Now let's look at the other controls. So I'm gonna turn these all back down. And we'll turn this low pass filter up. Another way that you can add harmonics is by using aliasing distortion. Now inside of this device, I also have a multi-band compressor. And what's happening is that when you compress the sub bass very quickly, we have a really fast attack and a, and a pretty fast release here, you're gonna cause another type of distortion, sort of an aliasing distortion. Now listen to this. Now this distortion, as you can see, is making those odd harmonics similarly to the saturation, right? But it has a different tone. kind of a thinner tone, right? And then it gets even better when you start to have some saturation and harmonics on here, you can get these really interesting tones to happen. Now let's say you get close to a tone that you want, but you still can't hear the bass very well. That's where the tilt comes in. Now what the tilt does is it essentially starts to favor the top end and take the sub bass and turn the sub bass down. So the higher this is, the, the less sub bass we have and the more top end frequencies we get. Take a listen. See how it tilts the lower end down and tilts the top up? We'll scoop a little bit and then we'll low pass. 
To my ears, using this control, you almost have to use the low pass to clean up some of the top end aliasing. In fact, if I turn these down all the way and we turn this all the way up, take a listen to this. You can see how that low pass filter just cleans up all the junk that it makes up high. Now let's take a listen to this mix. Cool, so I think it's also important to mention that when you're talking about sub bass, most people's speakers don't really make significant frequencies below 30 hertz. Even my studio speakers struggle making 20 hertz sounds. So when you think about sub bass and you look at the actual notes to the sub bass frequencies, you can see that we're really only functionally talking about one octave of notes. All this obsession with sub bass and all the crazy stuff that comes with it is just talking about one octave of notes, folks. So <laughs> so it's really a much more basic thing than you think. Sub bass is actually a very, very basic, basic topic. So the meat of any mix is gonna start with the actual bass and go up from there. So if you really want your mixes to translate, the other thing to think about is that really you need to be focusing on the mid range. Mid range in general is where all the action is. It's where every single device is gonna be making the same sound. And if you focus on that and get that right, everything else will fall into place. Awesome, so go ahead and pick this thing up. It's totally free. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.